So now we want to test the function of the seeder. If we've had GPS hooked up to the X30 before, we're going to have to start a job. How we start a job is expand this guidance mini icon, drag it to the right, and for test purposes, all you have to do is touch the job icon and the green box with a plus to start a new job. Recommend that you rename this job test test. Another mini icon, very important over here, is our ASE on or off. If you want guidance to turn it on or off at the headlands, you would leave this mini view up. We can have it set to whatever boundary we choose and the ASE on or off. If we had ASE on, you wouldn't be able to do any stationary tests because it would think it's already covered that ground. So for testing, it has to be off. Once we've done our calibration testing to verify each auger controls properly with calibration, we're going to want to do the same thing or similar in a seating mode. Okay. As I pointed out before, our master clutch indicator will tell us a few things. Indicated when it's red means that it's not in a ready and on state. So we can either touch the master on the switch box or on the virtual terminal. I'll touch it on the switch box. And then it pops up a master switch status. Fan speed to start. Before we had disabled the fan speed to start to zero but I turned it back on to demo that function. So it's very important to push that red button when it's red to find out what's going on. Various things such as you've had GPS and you don't have a job loaded are a very common call we get. Implement not calibrated, any of those things will give you that red icon. So I'll change this back over, go to implement cedar granular tank, fan speed to start, put it back down to zero, back to the running screen. Now our indicator went white, indicating we can test the function of each of these tanks. We're going to want to verify the touch screen works and as well we're going to want to verify our switch box works. all gone green. Our master switch, we're going to want to test the virtual switch as well as the master on the switch box. So we have to get some fan oil going. I'll engage the fans to show you RPM. Starts to show RPM. I hit fill and then fill cal with the remote to divert oil to the metering circuit so we can turn the augers and simulate like we're seating. We have a manual speed of 5 miles an hour entered. We'll touch the touch screen. Now even though we don't have product in the tank, each of these tanks are turning. We're going to want to confirm they all turn off. So tank one, off, tank two, off, tank three, off, tank four, off, tank five, off. I'll demo on tank one. I'll touch the touch screen on tank one to turn it on. Turning at an RPM to give us 85 pounds an acre. Our preset one is 100. 
Ramp it up, should speed up. The fictitious preset of 350 pounds per acre in the monitor we set up before. I'll touch it. If you look down below, we've got 100 pounds an acre, 161 RPM at 100 pounds. Hit 350. Increases the speed very fast. We can hit the increase button. Driving it faster. The decrease. Driving it slower. We customize our switch box. So that we have our A and B as increase button. So I hit A. It keeps increasing by our preset increment. And then decrease. Now we're going to want to test the master on the switch box. As well as the master on the touch screen. We'd like you to repeat this process with each of your tanks that you will be metering with. Back on the tank, there's one more function that we should test. We had a pre-load time in there. That means the metering augers will run for a predetermined amount of time. So I've got it on tank one. I can depress whichever ones I want. If I simply wanted to check my seed runs or my seed and fertilizer runs, I could have a couple different ones engaged. And then I press this for... And it ran for the five seconds that we set up before. If I press and hold it, they'll run for as long as I hold it. We also have a dashboard down at the bottom that we can customize. We've got tanks one, two, three, four, and five on display as well as our speed. To customize that, I touch it. I have it set up to view all of our tanks and the speed. Now we can customize what's inside of each box. Touching it again, tank one. I can have it application rate and metering RPM simply. However you like that customized or your operator. So we can view all the functions down below and we don't have to be looking at this page across the top. If it's equipped with blockage, we want to check the blockage sensors for each tank. So we can view the blockage in a couple different places. We can touch the screen drag that up. Now we're viewing all of our blocked head sensors that we have set up. Our blocked head sensors are mounted on the drill and they're a simple Dickie John type sensor and it acts as a switch. Okay. When there's product going through it these indicators will turn green. When it's in a ready state they'll be in a yellow state. I'm going to exit, go back to a fill mode. Always remember when you're done all of your testing to hit the stop button. That'll divert it back to the fans. Thank you. One of the last things you want to verify is all of your functions such as NH3 control, your liquid control, your conveyor, swings and late raises and lowers, operation, your bag lift if it's equipped with, if you have an auger, you want to practice that in an open area of the yard.